In this video, I will explain how hierarchical clustering clusters data in a Euclidean space. Hierarchical clustering is easy to implement and is mostly used on simple and uncomplex data. To begin hierarchical clustering, we must first address three questions. How to represent a cluster, how to choose two clusters to merge, and when to stop combining clusters. When you are able to answer these questions, you should be able to use hierarchical clustering. The hierarchical clustering algorithm repeats two steps until it reaches the defined stopping criteria. The first step is to pick the best two clusters to combine. The second step is to combine the chosen clusters into one cluster. Then we check if the stopping criteria is met. If not, we repeat the process. If it is met, then we have finished the clustering. Now I'll demonstrate how the algorithm works by showing you an example. In this example, I have six points in Euclidean space. So I represent each cluster by its centroid, which is the average of the points in that cluster. I also merge two clusters which have the nearest centroids. At the beginning, there are six clusters. This is because each point is considered as a cluster at the start. According to the distances, points 0, 1, and 1, 0 should merge. The new cluster contains the merged clusters 0, 1, and 1, 0. The new cluster has a different centroid, which is the average of the points within it. So its centroid is 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Now I have five clusters. While the algorithm is working, I also develop a dendrogram. This is a visual demonstration of the algorithm showing how it merges the clusters. In the next step, the algorithm merges two closest clusters, in this case, 5, 2, and 7, 2. The new cluster that is formed has a centroid at 6, 2. After this iteration, I now have four clusters. The algorithm considers the distances between clusters again, and this time it chooses 6, 2, and 6, 4. It's important to note that the new centroid is the average of the points in the cluster, not the average of the centroids. So I consider all three points within the cluster when calculating the new centroid. The centroid of the orange cluster becomes 6 and 2.46. The algorithm combines 0.22 and the blue cluster in the next step and makes the purple cluster with the centroid at 1.5 and 1.5. At this point, I could stop the algorithm. I could also continue and merge two remaining clusters. The decision depends on my application. For example, let's say you are clustering animal species. In this case, it may be meaningful to continue clustering until the last step. Or perhaps you have existing information about the expected number of clusters. Now that you have seen an example of how hierarchical clustering works, you are ready to become familiar with some more complex algorithms. Before you watch the next video, take a look at the following information on how to control hierarchical clustering.